Of the different warriors that House Greyjoy sends to assault shoreline settlements, the Black Tide Chosen are the most feared. When these elite warriors hit the beach, they rapidly form ranks and sweep a path clear through any defenses or defenders that stand in their way. Clad in scale mail, armed with master-crafted axes and wielding large round shields, the Chosen are among the heaviest troops under the Kraken banner. Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian, and in this video we're going to be talking about one of the more recent releases for House Greyjoy, and that's going to be the Black Tide Chosen. So this box comes with five unique sculpts. One among them is a banner, so there's no attachment in this box that comes along with it. And for seven points, we get a movement five unit with the melee attack called Mastercraft Axe. It hits on threes and then has a seven, five, four decay stat. The defense save for this unit is a 4+, plus and morale at 6+. Plus. They have a whole host of abilities that come with them, the first one being the Order Martial Training. This triggers when the unit's performing a melee attack before rolling the attack dice. This attack may re-roll any attack dice, and the defender becomes vulnerable. They also have the ability Dauntless. That states each time this unit passes a morale test, it restores one wound. And then finally they have uh, Divide the Spoils that's tied to both melee and range, but right now mostly it's just going to be used for melee. Uh, that states, after completing an attack, for each enemy rank that was destroyed, one friendly unit with pillage in long range of that enemy gains one pillage token. So the Black Tide Chosen give Greyjoys a little bit more of a survivable unit. That 4 plus armor is decent, it's middle of the road, right? And then 6 plus morale is over the, the halfway mark, so that's really good too. Um, they are fighters, of course, they've got a pretty aggressive stat line, there is a pretty steep decay, but this is quite typical for those more tanky units, some things like Rose Knights and stuff. Hitting on threes is great, but martial training is a, a ability that means that they want to be dug in. And that way they can try and like keep fighting through uh, folks with the re-roll attack rolls, whether they've charged or not, right? And then getting vulnerable. Uh, that'll help them trigger off, divide the spoils as well. And then again, for the defensive part, whenever they get attacked and pass that morale hit test, they'll restore the wound through Dauntless. So this unit wants to get stuck in and wants to get there early so they can start handing out these to pillage tokens to get the Greyjoy army running. They're like this very interesting, uh, like, support style unit, but also somehow an aggressive one. For seven points, it's a little it's a little bit hard to chew on with uh, saying that a seven point unit's gonna be your support unit, especially when we look at something like the Ironborn Bowman giving, uh, uh, having to buy the spoils as well. Um, and then you also have to consider that a lot of the things in Greyjoys are fairly inexpensive points-wise, you know, like they've got some really effective cheap units. So the seven points here isn't so bad to deal with. So let's talk about some of the attachments that work for these, and then we're going to transition into something a little bit different that we haven't really done before with any other unit because these guys are so unique. So for attachments, the first one that I wanted to take a peek at here was going to be a uh, Dagmar Cleftjaw, Captain of the Foam Drinker. So he, just for one point, which is cheap, it makes this unit eight points, which is rough, but he gives them a really neat ability called Battle Scars. And this is, after the unit's attacked, you place one order token on Dagmar, and this unit's melee attacks gain the following based on the number of tokens they've got. So after they get hit once, uh, they gain Vicious. Uh, after they get hit twice, they gain Sundering. And then on threes, or after they've been hit three times, they always roll their highest attack die value and can reroll any attack dice. So you can get, you don't really, like, it's a little slightly anti-synergistic. Not anti-synergistic, it's double dipping on their, on martial order, which isn't the biggest deal in the world because mostly just getting those first two is, is where you really want, like, or is what you really want. The unit itself, <clears throat> outside of vulnerable and having a decent... Uh, attack stat, they don't really have anything else to push damage, so giving Vicious and Sundering is going to make it so they're more likely to put out some of those tokens. So when I'm grabbing, for, when I'm reaching for Black Tide Chosen, the first one I kind of go for is Dagmar, because he, they are already a fairly survivable unit by Greyjoy standards, and he just makes it so they can actually get some damage through and get turned into a unit that's really dangerous that your opponent needs to deal with, and by dealing with them, they only make them more dangerous and then they feed into supplying the rest of your army with those uh, precious pillage tokens without those other units having to get in the mix first. Uh, next up, I want to talk about uh, 
probably, it's rough. I want to talk about Victorian Greyjoy on them. He turns them into seven points, but the reason why I kind of want to stay away from it is because the Order Relentless, I have a feeling, is going to be changing in the 2022 update that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, but at any rate, you know, being able to just vulnerable on the charge, that way you can save your martial training so you don't have to burn it right away is nice, but then Relentless makes it so that you can get that extra attack out of them. So 10 points is a lot for a unit, but uh, you're essentially paying 3 points for another activation on a unit that wants to get into combat early anyways. So Victorian's a possibility, but that could very well change soon. Uh, another one that's, uh, you know, interesting at least, is going to be Baylor Blacktide, Captain of the Night Flyer. So he's 2 points, that brings this unit up to 9, but he gives them two abilities that I think they appreciate at least. The first one's going to be Boldness and Courage, so each time this unit attacks, if it has full ranks, it gains plus one attack die. Otherwise, it's treated as having plus one rank for attack dice. And then Unyielding is another ability that he offers, and it just says the unit suffers minus one wound from failing panic tests for each of its destroyed ranks. So Boldness and Courage on this unit turns them into a pretty sustainably dangerous unit, they go from 754 to 875, and that's going to keep them uh, churning out some of those Divide the Spoil tokens over the long term. Unyielding is kind of like a, a, a catch or fail safe for the unit. So you have Dauntless on the unit where if you're passing morale tests, you get to fill yourself back up. But then if you've been losing wounds, uh, or yeah, losing wounds uh, throughout the game, unyielding makes it so that the pan failed panic tests don't hurt you so poor, so hurt you so bad. And I think that um, panic is just one of those things right now with the the in quotes decreased lethality in the game. Uh, people are kind of leaning a little bit into panic because it's more it's just more damage for just doing what they normally want to do. So finding ways to kind of mitigate that panic damage without having to try to try to boost your morale stat up because there's tons of ways to manipulate even the good morale stats. So unyielding is one of those things where you can just say, you're not going to really get me completely. So I think Baylor Blacktide is in the discussion for being put on the unit, but I really do think for the for the price, uh, D Dagmar Cleftjaw is really like my go-to for this unit. When it comes to commanders, uh, the one that I like the most with them is probably not going to be a huge shocker for everyone. It's going to be Eric Ironmaker, the Anvil Breaker. So as a commander attachment, he has the order Just Shares, where you can uh, target one friendly combat unit in long range and move one pillage token from that unit to another one within short range of that unit. He also has the Gifts of Silver and Bronze, so at the start of the game, you can target one friendly unit with pillage, and they gain one pillage token. His commander card doesn't really offer much, or his commander attachment doesn't offer much to this unit. It's more so what his commander cards do. So uh, I'll go through them and we'll recap afterwards. But uh, the first one is going to be Gold's Lure. Uh, when a friendly unit is performing uh, a morale test after rolling a dice, you can remove one pillage token from that unit. If you do, they automatically pass the test. So <clears throat> this card kind of dovetails off of my discussion about people utilizing panic to try and push that extra damage and try and steamroll through units quicker. Uh, all you have to do with Eric is just say, here's a pillage token I auto-pass, and then it doesn't matter how many modifiers they're stacking on you, you just get it and it's done. The next one is Steel's Might. Uh, this triggers when a friendly unit is performing a melee attack before rolling the attack dice. You remove any number of pillage tokens from the attacker, and then for each removed token you choose one. The attack may re-roll any attack dice, the attack gains precision, or the attack gains vicious. So even if you, the caveat to this one is if you've removed those pillage tokens, you still get the ability as though you had them for this attack, even though you had to take them off. So uh, this is a good way to try just push damage on units that might not have great modifiers, or maybe just want to get more modifiers. You know, getting vicious, getting precision, getting the re-rolls, it's all really good stuff, and uh, you won't be able to get all of them at once, because most units, I think all, all units with pillage can only hold two pillage tokens. And unfortunately, there's a little bit of uh, anti, a little bit of anti-synergy with the Black Tide chosen with this card because they really never can use it. They don't have the pillage ability, so when they kill something, they can't just give it to themselves. Uh, so they'll never be able to take uh, advantage of this, which is, again, why I like Dagmar Clefjaw in there, because he doesn't really need to like half this stuff he already gives them. So uh, the final card for Eric the Iron Maker is Iron's Endurance. 
This triggers when an enemy is performing a melee attack after rolling the defense dice. You can remove one pillage token from the defender, and if you do, you just block plus D3 hits. And then, again, it's got the caveat that says for the, for the attack, you still have the uh, pillage tokens for any abilities you might have, just to make sure you're not losing anything by uh, doing that. So, um, it's, it's not, like I said, it's not a shocker that the reason why I've decided to say that he's a really good spot for the Black Tide Chosen is because all of his cards want you to expend pillage tokens. And uh, pillage tokens can be at times pretty precious, so there are going to be units that will want to keep a lot of their pillage tokens on them, and uh, the Black Tide Chosen help uh, Eric's units do that. I know that uh, in the early days of Greyjoys, I'm not quite sure what the mindset is with folks now, but a lot of them, when they saw Eric the Iron Maker as an NCU, they were like, well, I don't think I'll ever play him as a commander because his NCU is really good for those pillage tokens. But I think the, sh the mindset might have shifted a little bit with like ambushing Iron Iron uh, Ironborn, or uh, the Bowman, sorry. And then uh, with Black Tide Chosen, if that's even in anyone's, like, mindset that they don't want to play Eric the Commander because of, or, yeah, don't want to play Eric the Commander because of his NCU being so good, now you can kind of, you, you get out of that mindset and can use the, use him, and he brings a lot of great abilities, like I said, he's, he's auto-passing morale tests, he's making your uh, less effective combat units more effective by adding extra rules to them, and then just having Irons, and, irons Endurance to just, like, automatically block things that get through it's really important because you get to see that you get to see your defense dice rolls afterwards to see if this is even worth utilizing and uh Greyjoys they are I've always kind of looked at them as a tempo based army and I really don't think that opinion's changed for myself and being able to make sure that you can control the tempo of the game by not just getting your healing when you need it but also uh blocking these hits so you're not taking a bunch of wounds especially on some units like you know uh like the, um, I guess anything with pillage really is you just want it to stick around, whether it's got a good save or a bad save. Like you expect your good save units to stick around and watching four hits go through for a vulnerable is not fun to see. Or something like your silence men you, that have a five plus defense save. You want to make sure that they stick around too because they are nasty as well. So I think that Eric the Iron Maker really appreciates the Black Tide Chosen. The only thing that gets a little funky is that uh, I think... Ironborn Bowmen are something that um, that a lot of lists are really keyed into in terms of being able to get this out. Plus, having range unit in general is really good. So you might have like too many pillage tokens hanging around. So one of the other things I like to make sure that I bring in an Eric list is uh, Roderick Harlaw, and that's only because only in the frame set of, or the mindset of uh, the Black Tide Chosen here, because we need to be machine gunning through our cards so if we have things in our hand that aren't going to be getting any utilization anytime soon and we've got these pillage tokens just stacking up those are just resources that you're not using so having someone like Roger Carla in your list to make sure you can shuffle through your tactics cards or just churn through them a little bit quicker is going to make things a lot easier for those who don't know what he does he just starts the game with two order tokens and then at the start of any turn you can remove an order token from him and if you do you place any number of tactics cards from your hand to the side and then draw one plus that many cards and then you just shuffle your deck uh, with those cards you set aside in there so Roderick lets you actively churn through your through your deck to get to these Eric Ironmaker cards so you can maintain that tempo strategy in the frame or in the in the frame of how Eric is going to be doing it with the, the black type chosen so this is the part where I'll probably get, get into like the different thing that I was mentioning earlier where I do want to talk about some of the better pillage to, units to bring like they're all good to bring with the black tide chosen they just are but I think there's some that maybe stand out a little bit more that just need to be called out to express how good uh, divide the spoils is on a unit that can really churn through stuff so the silenced men are probably the first ones that I would talk about uh, when we look at their pillage ability uh, the silence is infamy. For every pillage token they have, uh, they s they suffer uh, minus one wound from failing panic tests, which isn't a big deal for them considering they're five plus. But again, leaning into this idea that panic is something that people are really trying to utilize in the game, um, that's it's decent. But the one that I really like for them 
is that while enemies are within short range of this unit, they suffer minus one to morale test rolls for each pillage token they have. So essentially this, this unit can turn into like a double walking corpse pile that's running around. And when we think about, uh, you know, what Dagmar or um, Eric's cards can do, having Vicious and the Silence's Infamy, uh, we could also probably mix in some Boltons to make this a little bit more... Uh, Neat, I mean, and, and Reapers, of course. House Har Harlaw Reapers are just base vicious. So having a unit of Silencemen, there, it's it's another seven-point unit, which is expensive, but this can kind of make sure that you're utilizing panic in, in, in the frame or in the mindset of, like, we're going to play this tempo game and to, to keep the tempo going of just chopping through units and chopping through units and avoiding this attrition phase of like you know trying to exist through just a drag out fight uh the silence is infamy on the silence men can be really important to get active early and the black tide chosen can make sure you you do that another unit we can look at just as a like and i'm probably getting too much into list building stuff with eric the iron maker but it, i do like putting him in a unit of iron makers because they get to start with that pillage token with eric in there or wh wherever you want to put it and then uh if they happen to get into a position where you you need to hold down an area of the table they can get up to that two plus armor or defense save with their rated armaments so for each pillage token on that unit they get plus one to their defense dice rolls they can be really hard to shift they've got hammers so they're weakening your opponent whenever uh, they roll a one on their defense saves, and then they've got Critical Blow with a really aggressive attack stat. I think it's the same as uh, the Black Tide Chosen, so this is another unit that's not a bad one to take uh, when you're thinking about um, the uh, the Iron, or the, the Black Tide Chosen. I'm, I'm just mixing all the units in my head right now, but I know it's, again, it's another seven-point unit, so you're kind of making choices. How many of these seven-point units do you want to put into your army? You kind of have to pick a lane and go with it. Um, the other one that's kind of a no-brainer is probably one of the better five-point units in the game, in my opinion, especially when we're thinking about what Divide the Spoils can bring to them, and that's going to be the Ironborn Reavers. So their pillage token is really straightforward. They just get um, plus one to hit for each pillage token that's on the unit, which doesn't seem like a lot, but they do have Sundering. They also have a uh, they're hitting on fours, which isn't amazing, but they have a 7-6-4 decay stat, and that's probably one of the better decay stats on five-point units in the game. I can't quite recall what Stark Sworn Swords are looking like these days, because I haven't taken a peek at them in a while, but uh, these guys are really, really dangerous for a decent amount of time, and they're extremely inexpensive, so when we were talking about getting these seven-point units in, if you want to... It depends on which way you want to go with things. Do you want to kind of lean more into panic stuff with your uh, Black Tide Chosen to try and get those... Um, the, the silenced men uh, churning a little bit quicker, or if you want to be really aggressive and just, you know, jam, like, two units of Ironborn Reavers up at your opponent and make sure that they're hitting on those threes, and then once they've connected and hit on threes, they really are probably getting their own, uh, their own pillage tokens at that point, so they don't need the support from the Black Tide Chosen, which is another reason, again, why I like Dagmar in that list, because once you stop needing to spread around uh, pillage tokens that unit needs to be doing work and Dagmar makes that happen. So the other thing is thinking in the, in the, under the umbrella of uh, Eric the Iron Maker, the defensive stats on the Ironborn Reaver unit are pretty terrible. It's five plus defense save and a seven plus morale stat, but he gives them two cards that can help out. They can automatically pass their morale tests or they can block D3 hits when they, when they take these defense saves. So I think that they really do synergize well with the Black Tide Chosen, but again, there's really no wrong answer here for a unit to bring with the Black Tide Chosen. They're just a they're a fighty unit that supports the army. The only thing that's rough is like you have to be within long range of the enemy that you end up uh, destroying the rank from, so you do have to make sure that you're getting things up the table quickly if you want to make and bricking up a little bit to make sure that. Uh, that you can actually get the divide the spoils on these. Uh, it's one of the things that the Ironborn Bowmen kind of have over the uh, Black Tide Chosen. First of all, they're a lot cheaper. They don't take a lot of points to work. You can you can spend your one point on them to make them outflank, which can also get a little funky because it could change priority for your opponent wanting to take that maneuver position. But uh, you know they they are able to kind of position wherever they want on the table and then make sure that they're 
they they have opponent or they have enemy or friendly units within long range when they unleash their arrows to try and get some stuff through but again they have to get pretty lucky with a lot of those shots and and the panic test in order to remove ranks i mean they're typically firing in the sides but the black tide chosen don't care they don't need to be on the side they can charge head front and or front facing and get work done uh, especially if you've got some attachments in there that can turn up their their combat capabilities so i i do really like the black tide chosen as a supportive unit especially when we're looking at thinking about Greyjoys as a tempo based army i think they can really help uh speed that tempo up and get you to a point where you're firing at maximum efficiency right away so let me know in the comment section below what you think of the black tide chosen if they're making it into your Greyjoy lists or not i'm very interested to see how other people are playing Greyjoys because uh like i said i'm i'm very stuck on this this tempo based style of play and if you want more information on that i think i talk about it a little bit in the Greyjoy tactics video but if you want me to elaborate on tempo style play and miniature wargaming also leave a comment below and maybe i'll look into that because i've never really thought about doing it until now but thanks again and we'll see you in the next video